Uh, this is uh, for some of you who, 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 have, who has not been in this neighborhood before. Okay, so that's everyone. Who, who hasn't been to St. Paul before? Let's start there. I mean. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. We, <laughs> no, but listen. This, this is the uh, this is a, a dream of uh, this event, uh, a couple of years old now, that we wanted to uh, start having conferences where we can look at at the Latino voter and we can find out as Republicans, how do we reach that segment? What values do we have? What issues can we share with them? Because you know one thing about uh, the 212 election, it was an eye opener, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I've been in this business 20 years of trying to support uh, Republican candidates and, and um, I've seen a lot of uh, things happen in the Latino community. It was a bittersweet night, election night. One, historical turnout for the Latinos. Never before in the history of a presidential election of all the pundits, all the media talk about the Latino vote. So in many ways, the Latino community has arrived. When you become a voting bloc, you arrived in this country. Now for me, bittersweet because of the votes that went to Obama. But that's our challenge. And we're good at challenges. If we put our mind to it, we can win this vote. So this is, this is the beginning of, I think, a long journey for us, is to look at this community and start figuring out how do we reach this market, how do we get these votes, and how do we uh, form relationships, and how do we understand the issues we can work with. And um, in my company, Aguilar Productions, now for the past 17 years, we've been producing Hispanic marketing conferences also Asian, African American, um, and, and other groups. But I, I kind of look at the Republican Party uh, much like these corporations I work with. You know, their history, they've never really marketed to different segments. And now they're challenged. Now they've seen the demographics and their top managers are saying, how do we reach these markets? Well, they do it the old fashioned way. They do the focus groups, they put out a budget, they understand who this group is, they understand the values, and they do the branding, the messaging. That's who we are. Republicans, we're good at that. We know that. So this is, this is something we have to look at as we, as we look at this conference, as we begin the journey of trying to uh, answer the challenge of reaching out to different communities. And I want to really thank our, our supporters here today. Uh, without, without their support, we really wouldn't be happy. Stacy and Brandon, so Wallace, thank you. They were the first ones in on this. I, I, we talked to Brandon early in the year, and he said, this is important, Rick. He's counted in for support. Of course, our, our friends Conley and Cool, you know, Patrick Conley and, and Carl Cool, they're our PR people. Um, the LS2 group, you know, Lonnie. Lonnie's not here today, but uh, Pat, Pat Sexton is, and, uh, and Molly Smith. Molly, Patrick, thank you. Thank you for support. And then our good friend Mike McFadden. Thank you, Mike. I think when we when we reached out for supporters, I, I think we were actually actually hoping that someone feels the importance of this. So I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask quickly Mike McFadden to come up. Mike, you come up so we can thank you and, and just give us a few words about you know what was your idea behind this conference? How do you see us moving forward? And uh, and, and maybe even some of the some of the things that you've done in that community. I think that maybe people aren't aware of. Thank you, Mike McFadden, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, it's great to be here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me in the back? Is that all right? I, I have a, a, a voice. I'm Irish. If I get a mic, I might go too long. But uh, Rick and I were together at Boca Chica's on September 9th at the event for the Smithsonian Latino Museum that hopefully comes to fruition. That's a great, great endeavor and journey, so hopefully we'll get that done. And Rick told me about this event that he was putting together, this idea that he had, and I said, it's awesome. I have a true passion for what you're doing. I share your mission. And it's one of the reasons I'm running. I'm Mike McFadden, I'm running for the U.S. Senate. And I, I wanted to recognize uh, a, a, a couple people, three in particular, that are very special to me. My daughter, Molly, 
to have six children and I want you to know that the most important thing in the world to me is my family. I love them dearly and uh, that's why I'm doing this. We've been very blessed as a family. We've been able to live the American dream but I'd like to take a minute and tell you a story about another American dream. One that's really special to me and frankly changed my life. Five years ago, I got involved with an inner city high school that Rick's real familiar with, it's Crystal Ray. It's in the Phillips neighborhood in Minneapolis. And the mission of our school is to educate economically disadvantaged youths. And, and we stay true to that mission. 70% of our kids are Hispanic, 20% African American, 90% of our kids qualify for free lunch. And a typical freshman grades or test two grade levels below where they should be when we get them. And I tell you that just because we're not skimming kids from the neighborhood. That's not our mission. Our mission is to educate the neighborhood. And the good news is we have a model that works. Last year, in our sixth year of existence, last year, 100% of our students, of our seniors, graduated. And 78% went to college. And we do it for half the price of the public school system. It is the lowest graduation rate for Hispanics in the country, and it's not acceptable. It's immoral. Five times a year, we'll have an event at our school where we'll recognize the students that have just recently received their first college acceptance letter. And it's a big deal. And we treat it like a big deal. We treat it like a sporting event. We bring all 300 kids into an auditorium, a little bit bigger than this auditorium here. And we invite the parents of the students that are being recognized. And we turn the lights off and we put the spotlight on the child that's being recognized. It's like a Minnesota wild game. <laughs> so Maria, imagine if she was in the back there or she's right here on the side and the spotlight's on her. Maria, come on up. Maria's just gotten into the University of Minnesota Morris. And as she walks up to the stage with that spotlight on her, with, the, with, with it being absolutely dark everywhere else in the gym, all 300 kids are on their feet, screaming and cheering. Rock music is blaring. And she'll go up, and she'll shake the principal's hand. And then she'll go and she'll give a hug to her parents. And I guarantee you, every time, they're crying. And I'm an emotional Irishman, and I don't care how many times I've seen it, I'll have tears in my eyes. And one time I even saw a Norwegian, which is <laughs> But I look at that stage, the kids on that stage and those families on that stage, and it's a game changer. It's everything that we can aspire to as Americans. When people say that social mobility doesn't exist in this country, when they say the American dream doesn't exist for a large segment of the population, I refuse to accept it. Because I got 300 kids in my school that come from really tough backgrounds that believe in the American dream, the same dream I grew up believing. You know, my dad grew up on a farm. His dad died when he was six. He had a really tough situation. He was the first McFadden to graduate with co from college because his brother paid for it. It was instilled in us, in my middle class family in Omaha, Nebraska, that we could achieve great things if we worked hard. And the American dream is the belief that you can do it. It's the belief, that's the ethos, that's what's so important. And the reason I'm running for the U.S. Senate is because there's 300 million people in this country that are scared that the American dream is slipping away. And I share their concern. Hard working families that are working extra hours but have less money in their pocket because expenses are going up all over the place. Wages have been stagnant in this stagnant economy. This economy is not growing, we have to grow it. As wages stagnate, but at the same time, education expenses are going up, food, gas, energy, everything it means you got less money. So what I'm going to focus on as your U.S. Senator is three things. First of all, I guarantee you, we will radically improve education. We have to do it. We spend more money than anybody in the world on education. We're not near the tops. 
We need to be the tops, and it has to work for everybody. I can speak to this from personal experience, and it's not just my high school. Hiawatha Academy, best prep, Minnesota, Minneapolis prep. We have a number of examples of public charter schools in this state that work incredibly well. I will make sure they get fed, funded. That's one. Two, two is the economy. We have to grow the pie. We've got to get this economy moving again. And the way we do that is we've got to be responsible about spending. We have to go in and make responsible cuts. For four years in a row, we've spent over a trillion dollars more than we've taken in. $17 trillion of debt on our balance sheet. It's not fair to those three kids in the back there, my kids. It's not fair to the 300 kids at Crystal Ray. I will address it. I also will work very, very hard to radically reform the tax code. We're going to get rid of corporate tax breaks. We're going to make it much simpler for individuals to file their taxes. Uh, it's crazy that 9 out of 10 Americans need a professional, a professional to help do their taxes. And then lastly is health care. We have a huge fundamental health care problem in this country. I don't like the Unaffordable Care Act. <laughs> you like that? Because I don't want to give Obama all the credit for this thing that Franken has someone also. Okay. But it's not enough to just repeal it. We have to replace it. We have to have a health care system that works for people in this country. And it needs to be state-based. I've run a business for 20 years. The fastest growing line item on my income statement is health care. So we need to address it. But it's not by throwing it to Washington and have them you know, nationalize and run one-sixth of our economy. Rather, let's do it here in Minnesota. We have the best healthcare intellectual capital in the world, in the world. Between the Mayo Clinic, the university, the medical device community that we have, we have 300 medical device companies in Minnesota, the largest in the world. And then United Health Group is the largest healthcare services business in the world. And what's Franken's solution? Let's have Washington do it. That's not a solution, that's a disaster. We need to do it here in Minnesota, and I know that we can do it. I guarantee you we can do it. So in close, Rick, thank you for doing this. Because I, I believe in my heart that we have to preach our message, our conservative message about earned success and economic freedom everywhere. Not just in the echo chamber of Republicans, but everywhere. People need to hear our message. At my high school, I got 300 kids that are budding Republicans, and they don't know it. Because no one's talking about it. <laughs> the American dream is the most valuable asset that our country has. I guarantee you I will not let us lose it. Not for my six kids, not for the 300 kids at Crystal Ray or the 300 million people in America. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope you have a great time.